Now I'm going to take you over to where the actual marker is made, and, and we actually call that the foundry. That is where we actually pour the marker um, into the sand and the whole process there. So come with me. As you can see, um, the metal is, is burning. It's actually on fire as it pours into the uh, sand castings. And we actually do about three or four of these uh, pours each day. And the actual uh, shop, they actually, we actually stop, start working at 2 a.m. The girls come in and uh, lay out the markers and start the process. And then about six o'clock, they do their first pour of the day. And then usually like every two, two to three hours, a pour is done. And as you can see with the stick there, he's actually skimming off the top because the metal actually cools as it's being poured out and he has to skim the top off or the uh, plaque won't turn out. It'll actually misrun and have to be recast. As you can see that um, they wear a certain type of mask because it is very stinky and toxic. So they need to wear masks to be able to protect their lungs and stuff. The uh, metal that is being poured from this is 2,190 degrees. That is very, very hot. These are the bronze ingots that we used to actually put into the crucible to melt. Um, these are about 20 pounds a piece. And you, I mean, as you can see, they are very, very heavy. So this is what your bronze marker actually starts at. Just a piece of ingot. Okay, in this area right here, Bryn, um, she's one of our molders. She comes over here, she takes the pattern, and she actually takes and rams sand around the pattern. And then after the sand is rammed around the pattern, she removes the, the pattern from the sand and it leaves the impression of the marker in the sand. And that's how the first process starts. After the sand is put in, then they actually take high pressure um, rammers and they actually ram the sand to where it is so tight around that marker. Morris. I've been doing this for 30 years. After we get done pouring, it takes about 15-20 minutes for the metal to cool enough that we can start shaking it out. Uh, we'll take the clamps all off, clean the metal off the top, some of them haul them out to the other shop, roll them out, shake the boxes out, let them sit for a few minutes to cool, and they'll go over to the cutoff wheel from there. What um, happens sometimes when things misrun? What is a misrun flap? Misruns when they have a hole or a void in it and we have to just re-ram it and cut it up. What causes that misrun? Airlock, cold metal, numerous things. So, After the markers are done in casting, then they come over here and this is where they actually get shook out and as you can see it's all a, you know, a mess now. They shake out and they have to remove the marker. They check it to make sure there's no major flaws in it. If there's major flaws then it goes back to the casting and it starts over again. If it looks good, then what they do is they actually take it over here and there's actually a will to cut off the actual extra, um, there's actual extra metal on there that are gates, they call it, and they have to cut those off before they can actually start the cleanup process of the marker.